Hello and welcome to Strong and Curious. Today is another episode in the segment of Curious About Culture. In this episode, we talked about the very interesting Finnish culture with its crazy competitions such as the Wife Carrying Contest, the Air Guitar World Championships, and the Take Your Pants Off and Sit Your Bare Ass on a Pile of Ants Contest. Enjoy. So to start off, here are a few fun facts about the country. Finland is a Nordic country located in Northern Europe, known for its stunning natural landscapes and unique cultural traditions. Finnish culture places a strong emphasis on simplicity, equality, and connection with nature. Finland is a country that cherishes its natural beauty, values well-being, and offers a blend of tranquility and innovation. Finland is often referred to as the land of the thousand lakes due to its abundance of lakes. In fact, there are more than 180,000 lakes in the country. Finland is known for its sauna culture. It is estimated that there are over 3 million saunas in Finland, which is roughly one sauna for every two people. The Finnish education system is highly regarded worldwide. Finland consistently ranks among the top countries in terms of educational performance and equality. Finland is the birthplace of the iconic mobile game Angry Birds, developed by the Finnish company Rovio Entertainment. My guest today is Nia, who grew up in Finland. She's also an exchange student here at Han Young, and we're going to talk about life in Finland. Enjoy. Let's talk about Finnish culture. Yes. So what languages do you speak in Finland? Finnish and Swedish. Okay. We have two languages. And do you speak both or Finnish? Or? Yeah, but my first language is Finnish. Yeah. So it's mandatory for everyone to learn both languages. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, when you're in school, you have to... Well, if the Finnish is your first language, mm-hmm. because the Swedish also can be your first language, but you have to study both. Yeah. So you kind of have to able to con- communicate with both languages. Like yeah. if you work for the government, you have to know the both languages. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've studied like Swedish like nine years. Oh, really? But I suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> so don't ask me to speak. <laughs> But so could you hold like a conversation in uh, Swedish? Yeah, but you don't really need Swedish back home. Yeah. Like, there is like different areas where you can maybe go and then the Swedish is the first language. Mm. But otherwise you just manage with the Finnish, of course. So okay. I'm out of practice. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you don't, lo- uh, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Yeah. But all the like signs and everything is in Finnish and Swedish. Okay. If you go to movie theater, the subtitles are in Finnish and Swedish. Mm. So, if you're a Swedish person and you come to Finland, you're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. In Switzerland, it's similar. Um, at, at least everything is in German and French. Mm. And most, also like food products are also even in yeah. Italian. What's the food like? What is like a classic Finnish food? Oh, I think we have very basic foods. Like mm-hmm. we have salmon. Mashed potato, uh, mashed potatoes, and like meatballs. Mm-hmm. But I think very traditional food is like rice pies. Okay. Have you ever heard of them? No. Mm, they're like you have the dough, and then you make like rice porridge kind of thing, okay. and then you put it in, and then you just like fold it nicely, yeah. and then you eat it with the butter and egg. So we mix the butter and egg together. Okay. Like so it's like breakfast or just a quick snack. Yeah. Um, then what's the military like? Is it also mandatory? Uh, yeah, it's mandatory. But you can, if you don't want to do military, you can do like a, it's like community work or something. Mm. So for one year, you, for example, work in the forest station, help them there, or police station, or in schools, something mm. like that. If you don't want to do the military, then you can do that. But it's like mandatory. For the guys or also for the women? For the guys. Okay. But girls can also go to military. It's really actually often that girls go to. Mm. I know a couple of my friends that have done military. Okay. So yeah, I think the mandatory part is like six months, mm-hmm. or but it also can be a year, and after that you can stay there and work if you want. So. Yeah, and then one thing that's typically Finnish, the sauna. Yes. <laughs> so I read that there are about as many saunas. Um, so for every two people. There's a sauna. Is yeah, that about accurate? I think so. Yeah. Almost every house has its own sauna. Yeah. So. Okay. In in apartment buildings, 
Mm. Would you have like a common sauna or something? Yeah, you can have your own saunas, but mm. if you have like a small apartment, they don't usually have saunas. So then they have the common sauna like downstairs where mm-hmm. you can book a, like a shift or something yeah. and then you just go there for like an hour. Okay. But yeah, you have always access to sauna okay. wherever you are. So um, how big is like an average sauna like this? How many people fit in there? Um, maybe like five people. Okay. I think like the normal sauna that is in the apartments or yeah. stuff. But have you been to a spa here in Korea? No, I haven't. Uh, I've been to one. And it's it's really an adventure to go there as a European because uh, apparently they have saunas here for about one to two hundred people and they're huge. Oh wow! But uh, the temperatures are actually very different because um, the Finnish sauna is what like 70, 80 degrees or something. Yeah, eighty, eighty to hundred. Okay, well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's hot. And compared to in Korea, the I mean they do have hot saunas as well, but um, the one where I was, uh, it wasn't not at all a sauna like we would know it. Mm. it it looked like it was just a little uh like a hole in the wall and they would heat it with coal so they were burning coal to heat um to heat it up and it felt like you're sitting in a microwave and it was just like a little yeah and there were like just 10 15 people sitting on the ground in there okay. and uh, yeah and they give you clothes to wear oh yeah i've heard of that do you yeah. have to wear like really clothes there yeah i mean you get them so they're like they usually they're loose but uh i'm a little bigger than the average korean so yeah. it was very tight and i knew if i would sit down in there it would explode okay. so uh, I, <laughs> I got to awkwardly stand in the sauna like this because it's only like <laughs> one meter fifty yeah but oh um God. yeah i mean the the finish sauna is usually with like um wood piles and stuff right yeah so you can sit down there and there's like maybe two or three like stairs where you can yeah. sit down mm-hmm. so yeah but most like for five people but it could be a bigger ones of course mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. like the normal sauna that you have maybe in your house or in the yeah. apartments okay and what's it like with uh i've saw i see i've seen that uh, a common thing is if you have like a sauna next to a lake or something mm-hmm. you would be in the sauna then you jump in the lake yeah if you have like a cottage like mm-hmm. summer cottage or something then they always have a sauna there's no ex- exception i have never seen a cottage that doesn't have a sauna mm-hmm. <laughs> and usually the cottage is by the lake so then it's really normal to so like spend the evening in the sauna then mm-hmm. go for a swim come back to sauna have a cup of beers like okay. it's kind of like the whole evening thing <laughs> okay that sounds nice it's really nice i really miss that and would you do that like in summer or winter well, that's mostly summer, but also in the winter, then you just go for like the ice swimming when you have the hole in the ice, you just go really? and dip in. Okay. You can't really swim there. Like yeah. it's freezing because it's like big yeah. ice and it's just hole in the ice. Uh-huh. But you just go and dip in and then you go back to sauna. Okay. Is that like in the middle of the lake or like at the border? At the border. Like, okay. Yeah. Because you have to ha- somehow get up from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise it will be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Like a death trap. Mm. Yeah, but that's what many people do. I hate cold, so I haven't done that. Mm. But apparently it's like really good for your body. Mm. It's just like shocking, like, oh, it's freezing. Mm. And then you just go somewhere warm. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. I want to do that. I promised me to do it this year. Yeah. I didn't, so next year I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better late than never. Yeah, I will do it for sure. I've seen uh, something like this once uh, when we were in the military. I had one uh, like engagement thing in uh, uh, in the deep winter, and it was mm-hmm. very cold. And we had a, a frozen lake right next to our base, and then they had just random holes. But it wasn't like for this; it just happened to be broken ice at that point. Oh. So a bunch of the guys would just uh, quickly like get undressed, jump in there. And then you saw how they had like a little heart attack and then they climbed out of the thing again. And uh, like half the guys who did that, they got sick immediately because they didn't have towels or anything. So they were just wet in the snow. I can imagine that. We also have those like, also in Helsinki, like you don't have sauna there. There's Mm -hmm. just like small tents where you can just take off your clothes, put in a swimming suit. Then you go in the ice and then you come back and just change your back back, uh, on Mm -hmm. your normal clothes and then just keep on going with the day nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> sounds fun yeah i think it's like a hobby for some people mm. just to go for the ice swimming 
and get the day started. Yeah, no, that's gotta be good. And then I've seen also that there's a thing like a World Sauna Championship in Finland. Yeah. So how does that work? Uh, well, the winner is who stays longer in the sauna. And mm -hmm. it starts from 110 degrees and then it increases from that. Wow. Yeah, but I actually did some research on that and they shut it down in 2010 really? because someone died. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I don't know how it can be even fun. Mm. You just sit there and you're like, because the other guy actually burned himself like 70% of his skin. Really? Yeah. Okay. Just because it was so hot in there. Yeah. And their lungs were burned and stuff like that. Like, but does the temperature like increase? Yeah. It starts from 110 and, and then water. they like throw more water. So it increases very fast because it's oh, a really okay. small sauna. Yeah. Okay. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I found a bunch of um, crazy contests in Finland. So one of them would be like the wife carrying contest. Yeah. Could you explain that? Um, yeah. So literally it is what it says. So <laughs> the guy carries their wife or someone. Yeah. And this year it can be also a man. Okay. We live in 2033. Oh, 33. 23. <laughs> 23. Wow, I'm 10 years. <laughs> 10 years ahead. Yeah. Um, and then they just, the wife like put his, her like, um, Right. legs around the neck mm -hmm. so they're like upside down yeah and then they just run and who's faster wins and they also have to go through the water and climb a fence really yeah climb a fence yeah with... when <laughs> someone is on the backpack so yeah okay yeah. that sounds crazy and the winner actually gets they win beer for yeah. that and they win as that much beer as the who they are carrying like weights okay yeah so if the person weighs like 60 kilos they will get like 60 liters beer Whoa, that sounds nice <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's like very finished like win of beer for the contest <laughs> yeah okay then the the craziest one i found was the air guitar world championships yeah how does that work you play air guitar and do you also have like the lip sync or something to a song or no i think it's about the performance yeah. Like who does it better? <laughs> who makes it <laughs> Who has the best freestyle and like, yeah. yeah. Easy. I have never seen that one. I can just imagine. That would be dope fun to watch. Yeah, I'm sure. Then I found something like a toy horse competition. What happens there? Yeah, so the people have the, the toy horses with the stick mm -hmm. and then they just jump around the fences and yeah. It's, so, it's literally like that. And as, uh, that actually has come kind of famous thing now. Yeah. Like you can see a lot of videos of that. Mm. At first it was like a joke. I was mm. like, is this real? Like, <laughs> do, do people really do this? Mm. But now they have proper like contest for that. Okay. And the people take it seriously. Really? Yeah. They take care of the horses. The, the stick. They decorate it. <laughs> yeah. They decorate it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, and is it like, how high are the things you have to jump over? Is it? No, maybe like less than one meter. Okay. Yeah. Usually kids do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. But maybe some adults, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> say, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. If you do it, you do it, that's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, that sounds fun. And then um, what's beer floating? Mm. So it's uh, you're in the river. You can take whatever you want. You can take like the the rubber boat mm -hmm. or just like the whatever you want. That just floats. Mm. That's the only thing. Then you just jump in with your friends and you drink beer and float away. That's really this. That's it. And then everyone's watching people getting drunk, no. falling off from the boat <laughs> to the river and. Okay, so is it a slow river, I guess? It's really slow and it's yeah. not that big too. So okay. yeah. So you just sit in that thing and you drink all day? Yeah, listen to music in the sun. Yeah. It's always organized in July, so it's a nice okay. weather usually. Mm. 
Yeah. Then another thing I found um, that I don't really, I can't imagine that's real, like that you sit, you take your pants down and you sit on an ant's nest. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. I don't know. For stupid people. <laughs> if you want ants up in your ass, you can yeah. do that. But yeah, I have seen people do that. Just take off their pants, uh-huh. sit on the nest. Um, uh-huh. And you just well, yeah. wait. <laughs> That's Is it like also a competition? Well, people can make it as a competition <laughs> between friends. But uh, like, who is the toughest one yeah. who can sit there on nest? Okay. Because I think ants bite yeah. or they like sting or something. Yeah, that's got to be gross. <laughs> yeah, I don't want ants up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think many people do. Uh, I found one thing that's crazy uh, about the tax information. This is public. Yeah, is that it's true? public. Yeah. So how does it work? Can you just call and ask what's your neighbor's salary? Mm, no, we have the website where you can see the, or do anything about taxes. So mm-hmm. you can see them from there. Okay. So it's, yeah, they're public. I don't know why they're public, but I think it's cute that they're public. Mm-hmm. So people don't hide anything. Okay. I think any way we should talk more about money. Mm. in this world so and salaries and stuff and that's why also after the year when it ended they actually published some of those who made the most of the monies like who are the richest people like Mm -hmm. let's just say that they make money over than sixty thousand per year Mm -hmm. so then you can search people from the place and you can see if they have made that much money okay so yeah so, if you're rich, everyone will know that in Finland. Yeah. <laughs> but I have never searched anyone's tax like mm. information. Yeah. I don't really need to. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's there if I need to. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I guess it it's good for uh, to like promote transparency and uh, just allow yeah. people to really see what's going on. Yeah, it's a good start. And also, I found uh, I think it would be it's uh, if you apply for a job. So you can see someone else in that job, how much money they make. So you have a, uh, like a fair estimation on how much you should get. Um, then what's the hierarchy like in Finnish business culture? Hierarchy. Hmm. So I mean, like, are people like uh, on a first name basis, for example? Oh yeah. I have never called my boss or my teacher by their last name. Always on the first name. Teachers too. Teachers too. That's okay. really normal. That would be super weird if I'm like professor or someone like, mm. no, I don't even say professor. I just use the first name. Yeah. Okay. I think the teacher would be also like, wait, what? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Yeah. Okay. And also in the like workplace, everyone is on the first name basis. Yeah. At least where I have work. I don't know if there's like big companies and mm. there's like a big, big boss. Mm. Yeah. But no, I don't think so. I think everyone uses first names. That's like very yeah. familiar. Like, mm. I it feels to me that it's really cold to say someone's like last name, call them by the last name. Mm. Like, like very distance mm. person for me. Like, no. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a big difference. In for example, it's uh, the Nordic cultures in comparison to like Asian culture. Oh yeah. There, it's a lot uh, about respect, especially towards elderly people, because in many businesses to go up in a hierarchy, it's just based on se- seniority, meaning just the longer you work there, the higher you go up in rank. Yeah. It's more or less like a given. So uh, it is a lot more distant and classic vertical hierarchy. And I would say that in, or at least I assume, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. that uh, in Nordic cultures it would be more of like a flat hierarchy. Where it's not really like you have the boss who yells down at his employees. Yeah. It's more like a, a team effort to get to a common goal. Yeah, I think it's much modern in Nordic countries. Even though, of course, we have some companies have the hierarchy. Like mm. that's really normal. But I think we have much modern like approach mm. to the business world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually really stressed here if I have to talk to the teacher. Like. Mm. What do I have to say? Really? Yeah. Okay. I would be like, oh, mm, teacher, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I didn't have to yet do that. So, mm. <laughs> but yeah, because we always use the first name. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's also one difference with uh, the professors. 
So uh, back home, I would just, after class, when I have a question, I would just go up and be like, can you explain me or whatever. Yeah. But uh, here, um, I don't know if you had the same experience, but they told us they have like an office hour, uh, the, yeah. the professor. So you can just, don't talk to me after class, but in my office hour, then you can bother me. Yeah, that's so weird. Like you can't ask in the middle of the class. Mm. If you raise your hand, they just ignore you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, well. Fine, yeah. but like back home, you can just interrupt a teacher mm. and like ask. Of yeah. course, be polite about it and yeah, raise yeah. your hand, don't just yell. Yeah. Some people do that too. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think that makes a lot more sense. I mean, if you don't understand something now, then it makes more sense to explain it right away so you understand the rest that's coming. Because in one class, that was just so weird. Uh, one guy, um, he, the teacher was talking about something we had to turn in like the next week. And then um, a guy raised his hand to, to ask a question. He was like, no questions during class. And then afterwards, I heard him say, uh, like, uh, how do we have to turn it in, like a PowerPoint or PDF or whatever. And I wanted to ask the same question. And now he has to answer the same question like seven times instead of just yeah. asking it once, uh, answering again once with everyone. Yeah. So weird. Yeah. yeah, here they just, they want to teach and that's it. They don't mm -hmm. want to have conversations or someone else's like what they think about it mm. they just want to get over it <laughs> yeah yeah that's true so just get it done then um what about santa claus good old nick he lives in finland yeah he lives in rovaniemi which is in finland <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in lapland mm -hmm. so yeah there is like a place which is called like santa claus village mm -hmm. And yeah, it's very touristy place. Of course, everyone mm. wanna see Santa Claus there. Mm. So they travel there, and then there's like ho they actually have built a whole village there, which is really? like yeah, okay. it's really nice looking. Haven't been there, but seen the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is a Santa Claus, and there is like elves. Uh, actually, it's people get like um, like season jobs being yeah. the elf there. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you can take picture with the Santa Claus. And can you also like send letters to it like a classic kid? Yeah. One? I don't want to break everyone's heart, but I don't know if they read the letters. <laughs> <laughs> but you can yeah. send the letters there because they receive a lot of letters. So mm. if someone really reads them, wow, that's a job. Yeah. So maybe they just have like a default. Like, thanks for writing us yeah. or something. <laughs> the same answer to everyone. <laughs> One thing I found that when, you, um, when you're expecting a, a child, that mm. you get support from the government. Yeah. So you get the materni maternity like, package or mm -hmm. a box, which contains a lot of clothes, a lot of like, kind of everything you need from the start. Mm. Like clippers for the like nails you just need uh, linens if it's winter they usually have like a winter jacket which is like because baby clothes are kind of expensive mm. so they just want to make sure that everyone get the fair start okay to go to That's motherhood nice. yeah and they always change the box like every year so there's every year there is new stuff so mm. if you have like many kids you don't always get the same box that could be kind of boring. Yeah. And then if you don't want the box, you already have like all the necessary things like bottles, stuff like that, and clothes. You can change it for the money, which is around maybe 200 euros. Okay. Could I could be wrong, but I think it's around 200 euros. Okay. Which is, the box is actually more, it has more value than 200 euros. Mm -hmm. But if you don't need, you need the stuff, then of course you can take the money. Yeah. It's something still. Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice that the government really helps its people. Yeah. And yeah. the box, you can change it to the bed. So the baby can sleep in the box. Really? Yeah. Okay. And is, is it is that like stable? Yeah. It's a good box. Okay. Nice. But that's smart. Really make use yeah. of the They have like the, um, under there, like not, not a pillow, but like which you can put down. So mm. it's soft. Okay. That's yeah. nice. That's really nice. Um, I also saw that in Finland it's tradition to let your baby sleep outside. Is that true? Yeah, we put them in the box or we put <laughs> them in the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very normal. 
I think there is studies about it, but they sleep very well when it's like fresh air. Mm. So even though it's like minus 20 degrees, we just put them in the outside. We have maybe balcony or something. Mm. And you just, of course, you put a lot of clothes on them so they don't yeah. freeze there. But yeah, they sleep there very well. Mm. I have a couple of my friends have babies and they do that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Or if you just gotta go for a walk and usually the baby for us fall asleep. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I you know, I read that actually the optimal sleep temperature is like between 16 and 18 degrees. I mean, obviously, like you still have a blanket and stuff, mm. but uh, that's because your body cools down when you fall asleep. So it's, uh, it's uh, I guess you fall asleep easier if you're already in the cold. Yeah, it's the same for, I think, same for us, mm. at least for me. I like to go to sleep when it's cold. Yeah. Then it's more comfier. Yeah, that's true. It's easier to fall asleep. Yeah. But we actually take care of the babies, don't we? <laughs> Even though we put them in the box and outside. <laughs> Hopefully. I found a specific word, Sisu. What does that mean? What does it do? Mm. Sisu means it's, I think it's about inner strength, what mm-hmm. Finnish people have. Well, well, it's our thing, so there is no one else understand like sisu is and they can really tell us so mm-hmm. it's like our thing we have decided that we have sisu <laughs> <laughs> okay. so but it's like in a strength like we we are like strong we don't give up easily mm. yeah it's yeah very simply explained explained expl- explain explained thank <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. okay so it's just like uh, the finnish spirit if you will yeah finnish spirit Okay. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Now, um, what kind of traditions do you have around Easter? Mm, I think Easter for us is kind of what Halloween is for others. Mm Because in Finland, we don't really celebrate Halloween. Of course, we have Halloween parties for the young people and stuff like that. But it's not like a proper Mm. holiday for us. So we actually do in Easter, what many people do in Halloween. So the kids, they dress up as a witches and then they go from house to house mm-hmm. and they actually make those like branches. I think it's like from willow tree. Yeah. I don't know, but they have like, it's a branch and it has like those white fluffy things on the branch. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's from the willow tree. And then they decorate them with different kind of feathers and strings, maybe some small eggs put there, mm-hmm. make them look really nice. And then they go from house to house with their branches. Yeah. And they say this kind of poem. Mm-hmm. It's not like song, maybe poem. It's about making the person healthy that they are saying it to. Okay. And then they give the branch to the person and they get like Easter eggs. Okay. For the branch. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do in Easter. Okay. And yeah, it's most about witch, but not the scary witch. It's like a nice witch. You put some wrinkles on and mm. some cute outfit. You know, like a cute witch. But I didn't know that when I first time go went to the know, tour, mm. something. I didn't know that. So I put like the black hat. There was like spider hanging on oh, it yeah, and black dress. <laughs> And then everyone was like cute and I was like the cold one. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of missed the memo of the dress code. Mm. But I still got my Easter egg, so that's cute. That's good. I looked up uh, some things about like differences in uh, in cultures about how comfortable people are with silence mm. during a conversation. And I found that in, uh, in Finland, it's no small talk. And people are okay if it's yeah. silent. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. We're very quiet people, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not the quiet that usually like in the Asian countries. For example, here, if you're in the public transport, mm-hmm. people are very quiet. Yeah. Like it's it's weird. <laughs> the metro is like full, you can't even fit there. Yeah. And it's quiet. Mm-hmm. We don't have that. But I think for us, being polite is to listen to people. And like, mm, how can I say it? Like, yeah, we're more quiet people. We listen until we're really drunk. <laughs> then we are very annoying and loud. 
Yeah. Then we're like, oh yeah, <laughs> inner self comes out. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we don't have small talk. Mm-hmm. Like if we meet person, we're like, oh, hello. And that's kind of it. We don't do like, oh, how are you? Because if we ask, how are you? We really mean it. Mm-hmm. It's not like the same. If you go to US, it's like, oh, how are you? It, they don't expect you to answer to them. Mm-hmm. But we like, if we ask you, we expect you answer. You can yeah. tell your whole life story. It's fine. Okay. Because we are like asking you. We yeah. want to, you answer to us. Yeah. If you don't, we are like, oh, you're rude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, in the US, it really is just like a thing you say. It doesn't really have a meaning. Yeah. Like you say, hey, how are you? And that's it. You don't really expect a, a real answer. It's always just, yeah, yeah fine, thanks. <laughs> but the same thing when I speak English and I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? Mm. It's just like what I say. Mm. It's like, okay, I kind of, I like if people answer to me. Mm. <laughs> but it's not the same thing if I speak Finnish. Because then I'm like, yeah. Different meaning? Different meaning. Yeah. Yeah. So we're really quiet people, but we are also very like straightforward. Mm-hmm. We are like honest people. Yeah. We're like, we're not like fake happy. I think mm-hmm. in some cultures you have to be happy. You have yeah. to be like, oh yeah, like we're not like that. If we don't feel fine, then it's, we it's don't have okay. to smile. It's yeah. okay. It's okay to be the quiet one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. No, but we I don't think fake. that's good. Yeah. We tell the truth. Yeah. Honest people. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Let's talk about the school system. What's your plan? You're in your bachelor's, so like... Yeah, my second year. Okay. And what do you want to do after? Do you know already? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm supposed to graduate in one year, but I'm kind of thinking of doing extra six months. Okay. I'm taking it a little bit easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'll just... Because this school was actually my plan B. After high school, or I actually did a double degree. So I did high school and vocational school at the same time. So I did two degrees. Okay. After that, I was like, oh, I'm so done. I don't want to do school. Mm. So I took three gap years. Really? Yeah. Okay. And then I was like, okay, I need to go to school now. (laughs) And the business school was always like a plan B for me. Mm -hmm. And I never got the plan A. So I just went with the plan B. (laughs) Okay. And I still don't have the plan A. So, yeah, it has been nice. I still have some left, so I will just finish this and then I will see what I want to I want to do the master's, of course, mm. but not maybe straight away. Yeah. Also take like one gap here between them. Okay. But so in Finland, it's very accepted to take like a gap year and take your time yeah, to figure it really out. Yeah, it's really normal. Yeah. It's really normal. Some people go f- straight from high school if they really know, but if they don't know, it's very normal to take a gap year. Mm. I don't think any of my closest friends went to study straight away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's good. I talked to um, the Singaporean girl recently and she told me the story of how uh, there it's really, you have to, you know, you have to keep up, Mm. you have to deliver all the time. You have to get school done as long as fast as you can. And you have to keep up with your peers. You can't fall behind. Yeah. And it's like a rap race kind of thing. And uh, I'm glad that, uh, I already thought that it's kind of like this, that it's very accepted in, in Europe or in Nordic countries too. And you really yeah. take your time, figure it out and just do, do what makes you happy and don't worry too much about where the others are. Yeah, I think that's very good. I have heard also from other cultures that they just, everyone just go to the school straight away and mm-hmm. continues the studies that you can graduate really early. That's good because then you're like, oh, you're done with the school. But for me, if I want to study at when I turned like 30, that's fine too, I can do that. Yeah. It's very like, everyone is fine with it. Mm. Like yeah. do a new degree if you don't like your home now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's good. Uh, in my uh, university, I study at the University of Applied Sciences in Switzerland. Mm. And there, uh, it's very common that you have um, older people, I mean, older compared to 18 year olds. Yeah. So you have a bunch of uh, 30, 35 year olds or something. And they even have a kid's room in the university building. So if you can't like drop a kid off somewhere, you can bring him with you and just oh. let him play in the kid's room while you're studying. Wow. That's very nice. We yeah. don't have that yet. We should maybe have that. But... Yeah. <laughs> but that's very nice. So like everyone is like taking 
like in they, if, oh if you have kids like it's fine you can bring mm. your kids here yeah exactly uh, that's very nice what's the grade system do you also have like a to a b c d e f mm. or no in the compulsory school like in the middle school and in high school we have from four to ten really yeah four is the lowest four is the lowest okay. that means you fail and ten okay. is the best okay and in the university we have from one to five okay yeah so and five is the best and one is the lowest okay <laughs> so we don't have any lists, we just have numbers. Yeah, okay. But I actually also, in the vocational school, I had from... Was it one to three or something? One to three mm -hmm. in vocational school. But in high school, it was four to ten. Okay. And one to three is just like when you failed, two is okay and three is good? Or? No, zero is that you failed, but one is like you passed, two is okay and three is like the best. Okay. I didn't really like that. There's only three options to get. Mm. But it's easy to get good grades. Yeah. <laughs> but, but vocational school is also about like for the work. It's not about the academic. That's mm. for the high school. Vocational school, like if you already know what you want to be, like, oh, you want to be hairdresser, then you go for, uh, for vocational school for the hairdressers. Mm -hmm. And it's more about the work. Like half of the studies is like about working. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe that's why the grades are very weird there <laughs> okay so with your uh, experience abroad has mm. this in any way like changed your perspective on your own culture or made you like appreciate certain things back home more yeah i think so i especially about the school i think our school system is better than here mm -hmm. i think here is a lot of unnecessary things that we have to learn and just waste of time some mm -hmm. of the things so that's really what I'm, what makes you appreciate home. And also when you meet new people and you like talk about them or how things work in their country. And then you're like, oh, wow. Like, for example, we mm. get the study aid. We get free money from the government mm, yeah. when we study and we just take it as granted. We're like, oh yeah, it's normal. But mm. not many countries have that. That's true, we don't. <laughs> yeah, so I just yeah. get, get like, six to seven hundred euros every yeah. month for free and you never have to pay back or anything no and where does the money come from is it like just from taxes yeah from taxes okay oh ah, so yeah. maybe it makes you appreciate those things a lot more because you're like oh not mm -hmm. many people have that yes. but when you grow up with it you're like oh this is normal mm. so yeah and also for the study uh, study loan if you graduate on time the government will pay 40 percent of the study loan per year really yeah so that's almost half that's yeah. a lot of money that is a lot of money so yeah but uh, like for a normal let's say basic education do you have to pay for this or is that also paid by the government yeah everything is free everything. you don't have also to pay university anything? yeah university is also free you don't have to pay anything okay. and for example in high school when i was in there we have to buy our own books but they change it, now the government also buys those. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay anything. You get all the free lunches. Yeah. Lunch? So you mean food at school is free? Yeah, not in university anymore, but yeah. like in middle school, high school, you huh. get the lunch free. That must be nice. <laughs> yeah, but then you didn't appreciate that. Like, mm -hmm. You're like, ugh, school food sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat that. Okay. But now when I have to pay it, I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I really miss that okay yeah i mean it's true seeing other stuff it really makes you think a lot more about what you have and what you mm -hmm. don't have here yeah because it's the thing that you realize as soon as it's gone like oh i really like that yeah or appreciate it all right um so always when i finish up a podcast i have a little mm -hmm. quote of the day um so today's quote is by antoine de saint exupéry Oh. Uh, a goal without a plan is just a wish, which should just remind us of the importance of having a clear plan and strategy in order to achieve our goals. And that's it for today. Amazing. So thank you very much for taking the time. It's very interesting. To learn thank about you. Culture. It was fun. <laughs>